Jupiter system alone. Maybe. <laughs> the more you learn about other worlds, the better you understand our own. We speculate, criticize, argue, calculate, reflect, and wonder. We return again and again to the astonishing data. And slowly, we begin to understand. The Dutch sailing ships brought back rare and valuable commodities from the new worlds they visited. Our Voyager spaceships return rare and valuable information to computerized wharves on this shore of the Sea of Space. Here the data are unloaded to be stored, enhanced, processed, and treasured. Maps of alien lands will be generated from this information. In this electronic warehouse are tens of thousands of images of previously unknown worlds. How does a picture from the outer solar system get to us? Sunlight shines on Europa and is reflected back to space, where some of it strikes the phosphors of the Voyager television cameras, generating an image. The image is radioed back across the immense intervening distance of half a billion kilometers to a radio telescope on Earth, one in Australia, say. The telescope then passes the information via communications satellite in Earth orbit to Southern California. There, it's transmitted by a set of microwave relay towers to a computer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And there, it is processed. The picture is fundamentally like a newspaper wire photo made of perhaps a million individual dots of differing shades of gray so fine and close together that at a distance the constituent dots are invisible. We see only their cumulative effect. The information from the spacecraft specifies how bright or dark each dot is to be. After processing, the dots are then stored on a magnetic disk, something like a phonograph record. By this day, there were already 11,000 pictures from Voyager 2 in our electronic library. Finally, the end product of this remarkable set of links and relays is a hard copy which comes out of this machine showing, in this case, the wonders of Europa, which were recorded for the first time in human history today. It is absolutely astonishing. See, Voyager 1 got very good pictures of the other three big moons, Galilean satellites of Jupiter, but not of Europa. It was left to Voyager 2 today to get the first close-up pictures of Europa where we see things that are only a few kilometers across. And at first glance, it looks like nothing so much as the canal network of Mars that Percival Lowell imagined to exist on that planet we see an amazing, intricate network of crisscrossing straight and curved lines. Are these straight lines ridges? Are they troughs? Is it connected with plate tectonics on the Earth? How does it illuminate the other satellites of the Jovian system? At this moment, the vaunted technology has produced something astonishing, but it remains for the limitations and cleverness of another device, the human brain, to figure it out. Fortunately, we have plenty of pictures to help us. Now, what, what about Gene's idea of uh, geysers down the troughs? Geysers down the troughs? Well, you gotta have a mechanism to drive it. Um, Larry Soderblom, Voyager proposed, imaging uh, team. Some wild idea a few months ago that we might have uh, uh, sort of champagne bottle models and what that is is you seal the crust and you have liquid underneath that solid crust. The question is do you have the, uh, that kind of condition which is an explosive? Uh, Lonnie uh, Lane, process, deputy project scientist. Over a large area and you, mm -hmm. I thought you'd have enough resolution that with some of these pictures that you don't see something that yeah. is spread laterally. Do we have the high resolution piece to blow up? Uh, yeah, it was here somewhere. There it is. There you go. Yeah. So this is where we pick out the relief and if we're going to see things we can recognize. This is what I Weeks after the pictures morning, from Europa were received, oh, we were oh, yeah. still debating what was in them. Yep. It's as if 
We're, we almost got to the, uh, here's another thing, look at the little mesas here. Yeah, mm -hmm. very bright. We mm -hmm. almost got to the limit of resolution required to see the craters, the craters which would last indefinitely on a crust this thin. Apart from the Rousseau's, there's a set of very fine, small, small dots, dots markings, mm -hmm. yeah. which are mostly in the model terrain. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like yeah. those guys. Now, do you think those are... Sites of outgassing, calderas, fumaroles, sulfateras. I don't know, but I tell you one thing I just picked up. Let's look at this. Here, all right. Look right here. It disappeared. Look right there. <laughs> <laughs> look oh, right. yeah, that's you see, the, you see oh, a central yeah. peak? Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, you see a little, little hole? Yep, it's a, uh, I don't see a Maybe radio caldera. Crater. I think it's got to be an impact crater. Look at the central peak on it. There's almost okay. no impact craters on this planet. Wow, wait, wait, we just found one. Almost not. <laughs> Therefore, finding, the exception. finding one which is alleged to be the, the, the exception, no, I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe it's not the exception, but something else. Perhaps. But on the other hand, you asked about all those little holes that we can't quite make out. So you, you could, could argue that the, the, resolution right, limited the, big, the big craters go away by some rheological deformation, and the little ones stay, but they're just uh, at the edge of our resolution. That's because they're one-tenth the depth yeah. of the solid, uh, the rigid yeah. crust. Well, maybe. Computer processing of the pictures has revealed at least a few features on Europa which seem to be impact craters, but something has wiped out the big craters. Computer processing also played a major role in one of the most amazing Voyager discoveries made on the moon next door to Europa, a world called Io. Even from Earth, we could tell that Io had a strange color. We knew that somehow sulfur had been removed from its surface and ejected into a great donut of gas orbiting Jupiter. Then, Voyager 1 sailed close to Io. There were a few places on Io which looked like the mouths of volcanoes, but it was hard to be sure. Then, Linda Morabito, a member of the Voyager navigation team, used a computer to enhance a picture of the edge of Io in order to bring out the stars behind. Four days after the uh, Voyager 1 encounter with Jupiter, I was looking at an optical navigation frame. Now, in enhancing this particular quadrant, became very evident to me was an anomalous crescent in the upper left-hand left corner, just off the limb of Io. What was it? The plume turned out to be exactly in the position of one of the suspected volcanoes. So basically, we realized at that point that what we were observing was a, a volcanic plume, and in fact, a volcanic eruption. Voyager had discovered the first active volcano beyond the Earth. We then found that Io has many volcanoes. There are at least nine intermittently active plumes and hundreds, maybe thousands, of extinct ones. The plumes can eject sulfur and other atoms off Io altogether and account for the sulfur clouds surrounding Jupiter. Rivers of molten sulfur flow down the sides of the volcanic mountains and are the probable source of Io's distinctive colors. The volcanoes may be tapping some vast underground ocean of liquid sulfur beneath a surface that is only a few thousand years old. So far in our voyages to the outer solar system, we humans have stayed home and sent our robots and computers to explore in our stead. Someday, perhaps, we'll go ourselves. But suppose, like those Dutch sea captains of the 17th century, the computers aboard Voyager could keep a ship's log. That log, a combination of the events of Voyagers 1 and 2, might read something like this. Day 1. After much concern about provisions and instruments, we successfully lift off from Cape Canaveral on our long journey to the planets and the stars. Day 13, we have taken the first photograph of the Earth and Moon as worlds together in space, a pretty pair. Day 170, a problem in the deployment of the boom that supports the science scan platform. If the problem is not solved, we will be unable to take most of our pictures. Day 207, 
Boom problem solved, but failure of main radio transmitter. If the backup transmitter also fails, no one on Earth will ever hear from us again.